Welcome to Geometry 2-5.1, um, and I just wanted to outline a few of the theorems that occur in this chapter, or this section, and uh, go over them with you. So, the first thing we're learning at here is just uh, about quadrilaterals, and it says if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. And so basically, uh, and this is how you say, if ABCD is, and this is the symbol for a parallelogram. So if, you know, ABCD is a parallelogram, which means, you know, uh, these two walls are parallel here, then... AB will be congruent to CD, and BC is congruent to AD. That's it. So when you have parallelogram, their opposite sides are congruent to each other. Opposite sides, opposite sides. Let's look at the next one. Now let's take a look at how to prove that. So in this, we're given, again, parallelogram is ABCD, so ABCD. And we're trying to prove now that these opposite sides here uh, are congruent to each other, so that BC is congruent to AD, and then also that AB is congruent to CD. So, let's, uh, again, if you want to follow around page 360, let's see how we're going to do this. The first thing is, we, uh, what we know is um, AB is parallel to CD, and BC is parallel to DA. And how we know this is the definition of a parallelogram. So all we're saying here is that this is parallel with this, and that BC is parallel with AD. And we know that just by, that's the definition of a parallelogram. Uh, in order to show that these are congruent to each other, uh, we needed to draw a transversal here. So I've drawn this transversal, and I've labeled some of the angles here, 1, 2, 3, 4, to help us identify that. So our, the next part of our line is going to say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 2. Uh, and let's look what I said there. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Now, how do I know that? Well, I'm going I'm to draw some lines here so you can maybe see. Again, this is parallel lines. So this is parallel lines, right? So when this transversal here goes through, what do you have? 1 and 4 are alternating interior angles. So since we know that BC and AD are parallel, then they're alternating interior angles, 1, 4, and also 3 and 2 will be congruent to each other. So that's how we get that. Now again, since we're trying to prove that sides are the same, right, uh, we're going to have to sh prove that two shapes are the same here, or congruent to each other. So I'm going to try to show that these two triangles are congruent. Now if I can get these two triangles congruent to each other, then I could say that the corresponding parts are congruent, and then establish that these walls, or these walls, uh, are also congruent to each other. So the next line that we're going to do here is just say that um, AC is congruent to itself, AC. Uh, and that's the reflect, reflexive property of congruence. And all we're saying here, again, is that AC is congruent to itself. So now we've established one part of this triangle, uh, this uh, on these two triangles, one part of each are equal to each other. Well, because we have that now, we could also say that uh, triangle ABC uh, is congruent to triangle CDA. And how do we know that? Uh, angle, side, angle. So we have uh, an angle for side and 2 is equal to angle 1, side, and 3. So again, that's um, because of um, angle, side, angle. And now that we have two triangles that are equal to each other, we can say that um, AB is congruent to CD, um, and that, um, oops, excuse me, and that BC is congruent to DA, which is what we set out to prove. We set out to prove that these two sides are the same, and we did that by showing that these two triangles are congruent to each other, therefore their corresponding parts of the triangles are also congruent to each other. All right, let's look at the next theorem. The next theorem states uh, consecutive angles within parallelograms uh, are supplementary. And so let's look at what we're saying here. So what we're saying is uh, that consecutive angles, first of all, just to point this out, are two angles that share a side. Um, so B... Angle B and angle C both share BC here. Or, you know, uh, angle C and angle D are consecutive because they both share uh, the side CD. So uh, another way to think of consecutive is in order, right? So any two angles, one after the other. So A and B would be consecutive. B and C are consecutive. C and D are, or D and A or A and D. So those are consecutive angles. And what this theorem states is that um, they are supplementary. So uh, they're saying angle B plus angle C and I'll write this out here, the measurement of angle B plus the measurement of angle C equals 180 degrees. 
And how do we know that? And I'll do just another one just so you can see all four sides here. Uh, angle C plus angle D are also uh, supplementary. And how do we know that? Let's look at this again. The measurement of angle C plus the measurement of angle D equals 90 degrees. Well, we know that um, from same side interior angles. And so let's, uh, if I were to extend these lines just a little bit, uh, and, and both these are parallel, but let's do this one first. If this was to go on and this was to go on, what you can see is that, um, and this is our transversal, right? Same side interior angles postulate says that the interior angles on, what, on the same side of a transversal uh, are supplementary at 180 degrees. And that's exactly what you have here. And let's look at the other one. I'm going to take away this. If we looked at these parallel lines, and this is the transversal now, again, uh, B and C are same side interior angles. And that postulate says that these same side interior angles, B and C, will add to 180 degrees. All right, let's look at the next one. Real quick on this. This will be helpful because if you knew, let's say this was 100 degrees, uh, then you could use some algebra to figure out that this must be 80. So that's why that will be helpful later. In this next theorem, it says that opposite angles within a parallelogram, so C and A would be opposite angles, or another set is B and D. Um, I'll draw those real quick. Uh, the opposite angles A and C, or opposite angles B or D, are congruent. So this angle, the measure of angle A, will be congruent to the measure of angle C. Now, real quick, how can we prove that? Well, let's just say what we know. We know that um, angle A plus angle B will equal 180 degrees. And we just know that because these are, these are consecutive angles. And, and from the last theorem that we looked at, we know that consecutive angles, because of the same side interior angle uh, postulate, are going to be equal to 180 degrees. They're supplementary. Uh, let's continue on. We know that angles uh, B and C are also supplementary. And uh, we also know that angle C plus angle D are also supplementary. And let me just point those three out. So uh, A and B, these are going to add to be 180. B and C um, are consecutive, so these are going to add to 180. And then also angle D and C, or C and D, are going to add to 180. Now using substitution, or the idea that supplements of the same angles are congruent, uh, what do we have here? We have a and B equal 180, and then B and C equal 180. So therefore, A and C uh, must be equal to each other because they're, the sup they're both supplements of B, and so they must be congruent to each other. And so just to write that out, um, angle A must be congruent to angle C. Uh, and, the, and the same is true looking down here again. Uh, B and D are both supplements of angle C, so therefore B and D must also be congruent. So angle B is congruent to angle D. And then we've kind of proved exactly what we were going for here, is that opposite angles, um, excuse me, the opposite angles within a parallelogram are congruent to each other. Let's look at the next one. What this theorem is saying is that um, when you have diagonals within a parallelogram, um, that the diagonals bisect each other. Uh, and bisect means that the two sides of, the, of uh, the, the line segment will be equal to each other because they're going to bisect each other here. So, uh, how we could label that would be that this AE is congruent to EC, and also that BE, uh, excuse me, BE is congruent to ED. Um, and just to write that out, um, you could say that BE is congruent to ED, and also that AE is congruent to EC. That's it. Let's look at the next one. Uh, this, is, this theorem is looking at when you have three parallel lines uh, and two transversals, and there's one more piece that I couldn't fit in with the writing here, but it's that if you're given, if you have three parallel lines um, and a transversal here, and that the segments of AC and CE here are equal to each other, then what this theorem states is that uh, any other transversal that is drawn, so in this case we're looking at um, this blue line here, that these segments will also be equal to each other. 
Uh, so again, if you have three parallel lines with transversal whose segments are equal to each other, then also any transversal you draw, uh, these segments will also be equal to each other. And I'll just draw a third one so you could see here. So any other transversal, so if this one came down like this, oops, if we draw a third transversal, this segment right here will be congruent to this segment right here. All right, that's it. Good luck on the bookwork, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, bye. Made with DoodleCast Pro.